Hello friends, welcome to Edusphere. In the previous video, we had uh, discussed the relative dating methods in archaeology and about the stratigraphic succession and typology methods. So today we shall continue this trick and learn other relative dating methods. First is cross dating. This is a simple method. It involves comparison of artifacts found in different stratigraphic levels. We have already discussed about stratigraphy in the previous video. In this method, the age of archaeological finds or remains are compared with other finds or remains which sometimes have known dates. This method is based on the assumption that a particular type of artifact, for example a sword, when found in an undated context will bear a similar date to one found in a dated context which enables the whole undated context to be given a chronological value. If we simplify further, when two objects are found at one place where the date of only one object is known, the other object is also assumed to be of the same age to that of the dated one. The greater the similarity, the closer the ages. Certain artifacts like coins, pottery, arrowheads, etc., which have limited occurrence in a given culture, provides best example for cross dating. Now, this is all about cross dating. So, cross dating is nothing but simple comparison between different objects. Next is fluorine, uranium, and nitrogen analysis. In short, you can say fun analysis to remember this. This so called fun dating method is based on the measurement of content of three elements fluorine, uranium and nitrogen in the samples of studied bones. This relative dating method is based on the fact that there are certain specific uh, progressive chemical changes in skeletal remains that are buried underground. Both fluorine and uranium are abundant in the groundwater. The percolating groundwater deposits trace amount of fluorine and other elements such as uranium into the bone. As a result, the amount of fluorine and other trace elements in the bone matrix progressively increase. On the other hand, nitrogen exists in amino acids of the collagen structure of bones and teeth. As time passes by, the organic compounds of bone, which are mostly fats and proteins, are lost primarily through bacterial action. Since these components contain nitrogen, there is a progressive loss of that element. As you can see in this graph, from burial to excavation, the fluorine percentage increases while the nitrogen percentage decreases. Now you can say that by knowing the rate of decrease of nitrogen and the rate of increase of fluorine, we can calculate the exact or absolute age of a discovery. However, this is not possible because the amount of fluorine differs from soil to soil, which gives a differential rate of absorption. Besides, the rate of bone proteins degradation depends strongly on the environmental conditions such as temperature and humidity and after almost say 250,000 to 300,000 years, the amount of nitrogen in bones at different temperatures will be very low and almost non-detectable. So this is the reason why absolute dates cannot be determined. This method is however regarded as one of the most very important techniques for relative dating. Next in the relative dating is paleontology. The word paleontology can be broken down into the following subcomponents. Paleo, which means older or ancient, especially which uh, relates to the geological past, and onta in Greek, it means beings, and logi denotes a subject of study or interest. So, if we put together these words, we can safely conclude that paleontology is the study of ancient beings. But how to study them when they are already extinct? Essentially, paleontologists study fossils to trace the evolution of life on earth. I guess you know what fossils are. They are simply the remains of plants, animals, fungi, bacteria and single cell living things that have been replaced by rock material or you can say impressions of organisms preserved in rock. So fossils are used to recreate the history of earth by paleontologists. Paleontology is mutually interdependent with stratigraphy and historical geology. This is because fossils constitute a major means by which sedimentary strata are identified and correlated with one another. Besides, climate also has a direct relationship with the presence or absence of certain animals. So paleontologists reconstruct past, the climate changes and link them to possible causes of geological events. This enables the scientists to date the geological events 
and the onset and duration of climate changes as precisely as possible. The layers can then be analyzed and the graph of climate change in a particular region can be constructed. This table here represents a geologic time scale. The four major eras you can see Precambrian, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, Cenozoic. These are all broken down into periods. Now on this data, the scientists superimpose the climate change studies and then you get something like uh, as shown in this second picture. This table summarizes the major climatic changes which the earth has experienced in the geological periods. You can pause this video and observe the temperature variation graph as shown in the table. Now based on the type of fossil discovered, we can assume the type of climate in that region. For example, if evidence for Elephus antiquus is found, one can assume a temperate climate, while the presence of E. primigenius indicates a steppy or tundra environment, which is almost glacial-like conditions. However, this method also has certain shortcomings. A margin of 1000 years error might be there as the animals have not become extinct all at once. Some might have lived in isolated areas, in which case this method of dating is quite misleading. Next is Palynology. We know that all flowering plants produce grains called pollens and these are almost indestructible, surviving for many thousands and even millions of years in all types of conditions. Palynology is that branch of biology which studies pollen and spores. Because plants have been producing pollen for millions of years and pollen is essentially fossilized, this can help us study and understand what the environment was like long ago. So this information can be used to determine what ancient people ate and to locate underground oil reserves. The preservation of pollen in bogs and lake sediments has allowed pollen experts to construct detailed sequence of past vegetation and climate. By this method, a microscopic analysis of pollen extracted from the trees are used to identify various trees and a pollen diagram is prepared. While palynology cannot produce an exact picture of past environments, it does give some idea of fluctuations in vegetation through time. Using the collected data, a pollen diagram is drawn in which relative frequencies of various species are plotted. This helps in tracing out the changing vegetation of an area with changes in climatic conditions. A very good example of application of pollen method is the archaeological site at Chokuten in China. This is a cave system and here fossils of Homo erectus, which are commonly known as packing man fossils. These were excavated. Next is patination. If we go by the dictionary meaning of patina, it is simply a thin surface layer which develops on something because of use, age or chemical action. Coins and other metal artifacts dug from archaeological sites, these bear witnesses to their burial in the form of patinas of chemicals which accumulate on their surfaces and different circumstances will result in different sorts of patina. So the nature of patina formed depends on the atmospheric conditions and the nature of material like whether it is a stone or a metal. In this uh, picture you can see this is a patina green coating as you can see in the coins. This is another example of patination in stones. As you can see in this picture, if the patinated nodule is flaked, then the original black interior surface of the flint is revealed. Scientists say that the longer an object is exposed to the atmosphere, the more patina it gathers on its surface. Now, scientists have found in the stratified deposit sites that tools of bottom levels have more patina than the tools of upper levels. So it was concluded that tools of lower levels are older because they have more patina. So on the basis of amount of patina, relative ages can be assigned to stone artifacts fashioned by man. So these are some of the relative dating methods that we briefly discussed. This is the end of relative dating techniques. In the next video, we shall start absolute dating techniques. I hope you found this video informative. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks for watching it.